Hi, you have probably seen this formula, the Pythagorean formula. A small square plus another small square is equal to a much larger square. But I have something interesting to share. This is a variable a squared, and we can represent it by taking a line and calling it a. And now, by squaring it, we have a squared, the variable, which is shown by the shaded green area. But there is a problem in this. Look at this example, the line 2. By squaring it, we get 4. But can you possibly say the area inside the square is equal to the sum of these lines, which is also supposed to be 4? And yeah, it's not equal. Hence, in this video, we will talk about two things. How to form actual squares and to solve a quadratic using the completing square formula. And one other cool thing, which we will show towards the end of the video. So first, we will explain how to make squares that are actual squares, which is important, so we can solve a quadratic using diagrams. So now, we first make a vertical line, composed of dots, and here, the line is three units long. So for a three by three square, we write two lines like this, so that vertically, there are three units, and also horizontally, there are three units, and now, filling in the dots, we get an actual 3x3 three three square. For a 2x2 two two square, we repeat the same steps. We arrange the dots in an L shape so that there are two dots vertically and horizontally. Now filling in the last dot, we again get a square, and that's the first step done. Now, back to this fake square. The actual square is formed by thicker lines, because by default, if the length of a line is a, and since a line has no area, its width is 1 by default. So, for a square like that, the lines would be like this. Yes, I know, very ugly. Now we go to our second order of business, solving this totally random equation with shapes. After separating the constant term, we will draw the shapes of these variable quantities, starting with x squared. Now for 6x, we will just make a rectangle with sides x and 6. Now cutting it into two halves and gluing them back together like this, we get this very suspicious shape, which just so happens to be missing a square, to become a bigger square. And we will add a new square of sides, 3 and area 9 units. And back to our precious equation. Since we added 9 to the shapes, we also need to add 9 to the whole equation. Now let's take a look at our big shape. It is a square. And look at the right side of the equation 25. It is also a square. As these two squares are equal, any side of our square is equal to the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. And now we have x equals 2, or x equals negative 8. So now we have successfully solved an equation using shapes. Now. I will show a pattern, or an identity of sorts. The sum of odd numbers is always a square. Here we go. What's interesting is that if we have the first three odd numbers, their value is equal to the third square. The value of the first five odd numbers is equal to the fifth square, and this pattern continues to infinity. Here we only have the first ten odd numbers, which are equal to ten square. Here is a question for you guys. The second power of a number is always a square. So is the whole square of the sum of two numbers always a square too? Let me know in the comments below. Hint, the answer is in the video. And if you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon.